Hey everybody, W here with another Stratega Game Analysis. This is going to be game number five of our Road to Gold series with the flag up front. And I talked about in the last game uh, the, of the importance of scouting your opponent and writing that information down so the next time you play them, you have an idea of how to play them. And then you can change your setup according to how their setup uh, was when you played them and then how they play. So here's just a partial uh, section of the spreadsheet. I would have the name of the player I played, their one loss record, and their their ELO number. And in here I have a listing of how the game ended. This is the ELO points I got. This was my record. The date I played. This is where you would put the name of your setup. I just have to put either A4 or J4 because that's where I had the flag. I like to include the time, the number of moves. This column you probably don't need, but I, I write if the person knows where my flag was. So that's important when you have the flag up front. And in this column is probably the most important. This is the information. You want to record the games when you play, and then you want to go back and just check where uh, their, where your opponents. The most important thing is to find their high pieces, where their marshal and general and spy are located. You might want to put down where some bombs are located and then where the flag is. Then you might want to have another column. I just put it in the same column. Like here you can see, I say this player bluffs a lot. So you want to you want to write down how the person plays. If they're, you know, if they're a defensive player or a shuffler, then you would know in your setup not to waste any bombs on the front two rows. You could put all six bombs on the bottom two rows because he's not going to really attack your side. But if the person's a Marshall Blitzer or a Lottoer, you might want to have your bombs, a few bombs on the first two rows. So like here, I, I just wrote, I didn't even write, uh, where his pieces were, I just wrote blitz right, blitz left, because then, you know, blisters are pretty easy to beat, so then I can know to put the flag on one side or the other side. And then you might want to have your marshal close to the center, and then so you could make the sacrifice with the general and then follow up with the general and attack towards the uh, your opponent's marshal side and get an easy win. So, but that's the most important thing. You want to, like I said find where their general was in the game and the spy where it was located and the, and the marshal. And uh, then that will help you uh, get a trend of how your opponent plays. And as you, as you get better and better, as you move up the uh, ELO scoreboard there, you're going to start playing a smaller pool of players and you're going to start playing uh, the same players over and over again. So you really want to keep records uh, so you know how they play. And you just get their tendencies down. So, so uh, it'll make it easier for you to beat them after a while. And those players are probably scouting you as well. So it's, it's really important to keep this information uh, after your games. Write it down. Say you have it, and then, then when you play play your uh, opponent, check to see if you played them before. Make sure you use a different setup, and you should really do well. Then, uh, it's also uh, very good to write down this information because it it just makes you focus more. I think you're going to try a lot harder when you see the actual numbers, when you see how many games you won in a row, when you see that you're starting to beat players with higher ELOs. It's nice to know, like you beat a guy that's a gold spy or a gold sergeant or, or a, a platinum spy, and you'll know the date you did it, and, and then you just want to try to keep on improving. So you can set goals, and, and I think if you set goals, you will improve a lot faster in this game. But it's really important to, uh, to scout because all the good players do it. I got this idea from uh, the Stratego Forum, I think it was Loser Maker, who's one of the best in the world. He he had a spreadsheet keeping track of the moves, the time, and, and so on. And I think Major Nelson also did it. 
So I did it. And I think Major Nelson said it really helped him. It helped him focus and it made him play better. And it makes me play better too, because you want to try to win, you know, five in a row, six in a row, or you want to try to win, you know, four in a row against a platinum player or, you know, 10 in a row against a bronze player. And if you write the information down, you'll, you'll know if you did it or not. So I, I think it's really helpful. So just do a simple spreadsheet. The only problem is there are some players that cheat. They have uh, multiple accounts. There's not too many, but there are some when you get to the probably, the, I wouldn't worry about it until you get to the gold level. Uh, but they have multiple aliases and they will play you with an alias. And you, so you'll just play them for the first time. And then they hope to play you later again that day with their main account. And then you won't know that you've played them before because you played their other accounts. And then you're playing their main account again. And then they hope you're using the same setup. And then they will basically almost lotto your setup for a, for a uh, easy cheating win. So, you, so that's why it's kind of important to, if you play multiple games on the same day, it's a good idea to use different setups so you don't get... Uh, get caught by a uh, an alias account cheater. So I'm not sure why they really cheat because, you know, there's no money involved. If there was money involved, I could understand why, but I think otherwise it's just a waste of time. But the reason a lot of players have alias accounts, I think most players do, is because they use their alias account as a practice account. They want to try out different attack strategies and different setups because it can take you a long time to learn how to play a specific setup and you might lose a lot of games and you don't want to ruin your your main accounts one loss record by losing games uh, uh, trying out a new setup so that's why people have aliases so that's uh, all I want to talk about now for uh, scouting so let's get moving to the uh, game number five here and you can see I just have a setup and like I just tweak mine a little bit. I don't know. My setups are never really optimized. I just have one thing I do like about this setup. I'll talk about this now is I like this bomb setup, this bomb formation, the two, the two uh, vertical bombs here and then the bomb here and the bomb here away from the middle bomb because that can help you in late games. If you eat, doesn't have to be here, it can be anywhere on the, on the uh, back two rows. But why this is so effective late in the game is if your opponent hits this top bomb, they're gonna think maybe that you have a, a flag in a triangle bomb uh, set up here. So they'll hit this bomb and then they might avoid hitting this piece and they might avoid hitting this piece. But if it's a close game or they might be behind by, you know, a piece and they have to lotto, they'll have a tendency to hit this piece or this piece because they think this is the triangle with the bomb, bomb, bomb flag. And then they'll think, you know, that this isn't a bomb or this isn't a bomb and they'll hit it. And it's, it's very effective. And then also if this bomb gets removed and then you capture the miner, you know, late in the game, your opponent might come down here and hit this piece and find out you had the old double vertical bomb. And that is also very effective if you can get to the late game. So I really do like this this and then you can have you can have this set up and then you can use these two bombs, you know, have the flag in the corner and bombed in. So you can have a you can have a bombed in flag and still have this I think this is an effective uh, setup of the four bombs. Or you could have it like this. Uh, you could have it here. You could have the bomb here and a bomb here and a flag. And then you can have these two here. And then this bomb over here. And then you have one bomb where you can put anywhere else that you'd like. But I think these four bombs in this, in this setup here work very well. All right, let's get going to the game. So I'm just moving pieces around. 
One thing I should do, I should move my general up higher. When you have a flag up front, it's good to have the marshal spy up front, and you should have the general at least on the second row. Okay. Wow. <laughs> That's a shocker, finding a marshal on the... Um, you know, the second move here, that's a, that's a stunner. I, I don't recommend revealing your marshal right away. Uh, uh, there's a lot of reasons. I, I'll probably put a link eventually in the, in the uh, comment section about why it's, it's a bad idea to reveal your marshal early. Uh, only a few players can get away with that. Most, most players are better off hiding their marshal. Uh, but this this is this is a shocker here. So let's see what happens. So we don't have to worry about scouting the marshal. Now, what do you think this piece is? I'm I'm guessing it shouldn't be that hard to guess, but I'm guessing this is a, is a scout. So I have to hit this with the lieutenant. I, I could hit it with the captain, but I'm going to go with the lieutenant because it gives my opponent less information. But I like that trick too, where you you go down this side and then you go long distance over here, because you know this is. This isn't really a common spot for a spy, at least at the start of the game. But a lot of times you'll, you'll think the spy was there, but it gets moved up from these four squares. It, they tend to gravitate behind the lake after their, after like the first 20 moves. The spy tends to move up behind the lake. So this is a pretty pretty easy read that it's a scout wanting to come over here because he, I guess, wants to bring his marshal down. So we take it with the Louis. So I just go one higher and he attacks me one higher. Now, this piece is probably one higher than this. This is probably a captain. But I decided to attack it. I probably shouldn't have. This is probably a minor blunder. But I like to know well in advance what the piece is. So I have some options on what to do. You know, if this is a colonel, I could be in trouble. I don't want to go here. And if it comes down here, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure it's a captain. Because most people just go one higher than what the uh, the piece they want to capture is. So, but I, if, if this is lower, if this is like a sergeant or he's bluffing again with a scout, then the marshal's going to get me. So, uh, I probably should have just moved over here, but I do like to get the inform. to me, losing the lieutenant isn't so important, but getting this information, you know, at least one move ahead to me can be important. I probably should have moved over here. I thought about it, but then I said, ah, let's see what it is. But that was an easy read, too. Now, my opponent now has to make a big decision. And he, he winds up taking my major. And, you know, the odds are in his favor. Uh, but it is risky. But he probably knows... If he captures the major, he's probably going to win the game. Because most silver players, when they get down a major, you know, usually quit or 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 they get into a swap game and then they never get ahead and they wind up losing. So the odds of him winning are very, very high if he can get this major and not lose his marshal. And but it's really not so terrible even if he if he loses his marshal and gets the major it, it's not that bad it's not terrible but most players 
uh, don't know how to play from behind, and they just resort to lotto, and it's very hard to win that way when you're playing against, you know, an average player. So he decides to take the uh, the major, and this uh, major spy. And a lot of times people have a marshal here. It's the major spy marshal trap. That is probably the most effective trap against bronze and silver players. And if you watched um, any of the uh, mystery series by the original mystery player on his YouTube channel, he used that trap in almost all of his games. And it's just very effective because uh, the bronze and silver players know if they get a major and they get away with it, they have a really good chance of winning the game. But, you know, if they lose their marshal, there's a really high percentage chance that they're going to lose the game. So it's a high risk, high reward. Uh, it's, it's probably not worthwhile doing because so many people know the uh, major spy marshal trap. But, you know, players like to do it. So we can go look at his record. What was his record here? Okay. So he was 427. And he had over 4,000 games experience. So you can see a lot of his games probably he played fast. And he probably gave up a lot if he hit a bomb or if the spy got his marshal. And, but then he probably won a lot of games fast too. So that's why he has so many games if over 4,000 games play. So now that's always a big moment of the game when when you uh, capture a marshal or marshals get revealed. That's when you want to pause, you know, take some time, use your buffer time, and figure out all the pieces you moved. You really want to think defense first. It's really important because a lot of players they don't know how to play from behind and they're probably just going to resort to lottoing. They're going to bring in their general and start to lotto once their marshal is gone. So you want to make sure that you can get your pieces to safety. And that's one reason I say you should never have an open flag when you're, when you're playing, you know, most players, uh, below 600 ELO, you want to have your flag bombed in because when they get behind, they just resort to lottoing. And if your high pieces are out of position, your opponent can come in with their high piece and lot of your flag for a victory. You might be well ahead in, in the uh, material. You might have a huge material advantage, but you lose the game because your high pieces are out of position. So that's why it's so important to have, I think, a bombed in flag. Uh, but, you know, make sure, think defense first. Make sure you can get your pieces to safety. And then you have to start uh, thinking about, you know, his general coming in for a lotto attack. And then he follows, you know, with the colonel attack. A lot of times when the marshal gets taken off the board, the first piece the opponent moves is, is their general. But since this is so early in the game, he might have to move some pieces out of the way to uh, move his general. Uh, and also, he has to find some pieces... He has to figure out where he's going to attack with his general. He has to find some targets. So he really needs to scout some pieces so he knows what to attack with his general. You don't want to rush in right away with your general unless you have something to attack. So let's see what happens now. Now normally a scout comes and takes the uh, spy. All right, so now I'm in this position. It's my turn. What should I do? Pause the video and think of two options what I could do now, and then think of why I would do uh, those moves. Pause the video and think about that. It's my turn. I could, I could do, there's two moves. There's one common move that I think everyone would do, and there's another move that I think uh, is, is worthwhile doing. So pause the video and see if you can think of what I'm thinking of. Okay, so I have to worry about my marshal being revealed. Uh, 
And the obvious move, if this was a normal game and my flag was somewhere, you know, bombed in on a back row, you know, the obvious move is just to move your miner up to block the uh, scout from coming over here and, and revealing my marshal because I don't play well when my marshal gets revealed. But, but I did not do that move. I did another move. And the other move I thought about doing was moving my sergeant up here. And I want to protect this bomb. Now, the reason I did this move instead of, uh, you know, moving this up was because I really wanted the my opponent to scout my marshal. And the reason I did was I decided, well, if he knows where my marshal is, and then I move over here, he's not going to come over here with his general. He's going to come either down the middle over here, or he's going to come over here. So if he comes down here in the middle, I have a general ready to protect. And if he decides to lotto over here with his general, good luck, right? I have all these bombs here. So in this case, because I have the flag here, this is an unusual case, and... and this is a time, uh, you know, one out of a thousand maybe, where you want the marshal to be revealed. So I decided to protect this bomb, and then I hope maybe I can get the general to run into to this bomb. And then, because if I move the miner up here to block the scout from finding my marshal, he's probably going to go this way. See, he's trying to find where my marshal is so he can lotto effectively, uh, safely with his... Uh, with his general. And since the spy was here, he probably thinks this is a general. And he probably would go over here because he thinks this is, is this could be the marshal side, right? You usually have the general with the spy, so he probably thinks this could be the marshal over here. So anyway, I decided to uh, move up with my sergeant. He's gonna scout. You know he's gonna he's gonna scout either one of these pieces behind the lake because that's where all usually behind the lakes are where these four spots behind the lakes are where all the good pieces are. That's why we hide them there. And so I could have lost on the first move again here with the uh, scout or the second move of the game. So we know that's a major. So that's good now. Now I'm in really good shape. Now I got the major back, so now I'm up a uh, clear marshal, which is really good. So now I just want to get my known marshal up here, and he's not going to come this way he, with his general. He's probably going to either go here or down here. So that, that worked out fine. I don't mind swapping. When you're ahead a whole marshal, I don't mind swapping. I, I mean, I could have done it the other way and kept him uh, hidden, and then, but the then my bomb would have been revealed. And then maybe if this bomb gets revealed, he thinks this is the weak side, and then he might not even lotto over here. So that's what's great about Stratego. There's lots of ways you can play. So now I'm using just some tripwire pieces just to try to find, you know, where his general is, basically. So we're staying away from the captain. And that's good. That's always great when your bomb gets a at least a captain or higher. That's really good. So I want to protect my colonel in case he has a general over here. So this major could do some damage. Now, I do this trick where I pull away, but I pulled away too slow. But he also knows what this is, so he's going to take my captain. Maybe if I would have moved away a little bit faster, he would have uh, hit this piece. But he knew this was a captain, so he was going down. So that's good. We found a colonel. That's great.
So I want to save some of my piece, my smaller pieces here. You know, sometimes they can get real lucky when they lotto. So we get a major with this bomb. So we got a captain with this bomb and a major with this bomb. So things are looking good. All right, he scouts my lieutenant. So now I'm thinking this this game is I think this game is pretty much over. I think he's just going through the motions. I think he's probably now just scouting me to see my setup. So if he plays me again, he knows the setup because he's just running in with his with his lower pieces. You know, he's he's trying to get some stuff, but uh, now I should have moved this scout out of the way. I hate doing. I do that every once in a while, but I figured he. I almost figured he gave up. Uh, but you still always want to move your pieces out of the way when you can. We knew this was a colonel, so I should have just moved this out of the way. And I always hate that. That's my pet peeve. And when you start playing better and better players, when you start getting up to the middle gold and higher gold and lower platinum, you really need every single piece, especially if you have a bad memory. You need every single piece. You can't give them away for uh, no value. Uh, so anytime you can get away, get away. Don't let him, don't let him ca capture a piece. Uh, that's that that can get away. That's 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 just bad stratego. So now his colonel is trapped. He gets his lieutenant, and he's going to get some more information. And now, probably now, he figured out that yeah, this is probably the garbage side. He should have been attacking in the middle and towards the Marshall side. But now nah, it's a little fillet. So that's pretty good when you get a captain, a major, and a colonel with your bombs. That's uh... So I'm using this as a tripwire piece. You know, let, let's find the general with some garbage piece. So we get a miner. So maybe he was going to come in here to try to open up something. You know, that was probably good on his part. He probably thought that I thought this could be a a uh, high piece, but he wanted to sneak in with a minor. And that's what I'm doing here. When your high pieces are unknown, especially in the middle game, you can sneak in. I always like sneaking in with a minor to attack these pieces on the, on the, on the second row from the bottom. And... I always like to target either four from the left or four from the right. And since the marshal was on this side, the left side, I like to target four from the left. I like to target this to open up a possible a, uh, triangle with the flag here because four over from the left is the most popular spot and four over from the right is the next most popular spot. So whatever side the marshal's on, it's like about a 70% chance the flag's on that side. So it's worthwhile sneaking one miner. If you have like all five miners, it's worthwhile sneaking one in, you know, in the middle of the game to try to open up a uh, bombed-in flag. And uh, so this is this is what I'd like to target. But I like to get see what this piece is. You know, it's always good to find out what pieces are behind the lake. So he decided to swap. Not sure why he wanted to do that. Unless he wants to bring another miner down. So now I'm just moving out some pieces to protect my flag. He does have two scouts left. We want to see what this piece is behind the lake. It turns out his spy spy couldn't go anywhere. So what do you think this piece is? This piece is probably his general. He doesn't want me to find out what it is. So he's coming down here. So now I go back and I want to attack four from the left. So that's a good find. So like if, if, if my flag was bombed in, then I might, what I might want to do is let the general come in here, go past him and then trap this colonel. 
and then just make sure all these pieces that I can get, make sure I can get away. So that's why it's important to know the two square rule so you can move your pieces to safety. And then I can go down here. And that's the advantage of have, when you have a bombed in flag, you can, you can, you know, aggressively attack in your opponent's territory and you don't have to worry about uh, your flag being lottoed. So, but anyway, he's coming now down with his probable general and we get his general. So he's basically running out of pieces and that's always a good thing to do. You know, I think he's right now he's just scouting, but that's always a good thing to do. Fire a scout. And, and I don't always do this, but you should really do this because every once in a while, it might be a one in a hundred or one in 500, but every once in a while you'll scout your last scout and you might hit a flag on the second row, or you might hit a flag in a weird spot on the back row and win the game. So it's a good idea to use, make sure you use all your scouts before you quit. Because you'll remember those games. Those games are, you know, when you uh, snatch victory when it should be certain defeat. Those games are always, uh, always exciting. So he's lost his last colonel. Oh, see, so now that turned out to be pretty good. His major hit this bomb. So, you know, protecting this bomb got me a major. I mean, it, it didn't really matter. He was already so far behind. But, you know, that, that that's nice to get. Uh, uh, that worked out really good. So this bomb got a major. This bomb got a captain. This bomb got a major. And this bomb got a colonel. So he wasn't lucky at uh, lottoing. And we get the victory. So now we... So this is where you can get your data to put in your spreadsheet, the total time, the number of moves. And I don't care about uh, this information. But my new ranking is 492. So we're so close. We're only eight points away from gold. So we're on our way. But it's always a struggle now when you when you're playing when you when you start playing Stratego, it is a struggle going from bronze to silver, and most players do not go in a straight line up the leaderboard. They they go up two down two, up three down five, up five down two. It's a it's a tough slog. It's a, a really a grind. Uh, it's it's difficult uh, because you know as you get better you you play better players and it takes a while for you to learn the stratego patterns and to learn how to play and to learn the two square rule and to learn the different traps and to learn how to trap and how to protect pieces and how to capture pieces and uh, how to read the board correctly and knowing the stats this takes a lot of experience and a lot of gameplay and like I said, as you go up the leaderboard, you're going to be playing, uh, you know, more experienced players and they're harder to beat. So you're going to lose a lot often. So you might make it, you might crash through the silver ranking, but then you might lose five games in a row and go right back down to bronze. And then you might, you know, eventually get crashed through the gold rankings. And then you might lose a whole bunch of game, go, go on a losing streak. And then you could, you could go from gold to bronze. I've seen players do that. So, uh, one thing, if you, if you, if you're playing and you lose several games in a row, you probably should quit. It's probably not your day. And maybe if it's a good idea always to record the games and then go back over, uh, and, and see w what you did wrong. Uh, because sometimes you, you will force things after you lose several games in a row, you will play a little, um, uh, helter skelter. Uh, you will you will become more uh, risky in your moves, and then and you're going to wind up losing more and more. It, it it can it can really snowball on you. So if you lose, you know, two or three games in a row, stop and then wait a couple of days, and then come back to play. Uh, it's no fun losing either. So that can be uh, a little depressing when you go on a losing streak. But uh. So then after you uh, play your games, also then do your scouting report, you know, open up a spreadsheet or it doesn't have to be a spreadsheet, even a 
word processor and then just write down the uh, the important information and your opponent's tendencies. So this would be real easy in this game, right? Uh, this would be real easy to uh, scout this player, right? He you would just say, hey, he had a Marshall one one e e e uh, seven, and he had a spy on c seven, and he had his general on uh, c eight. And you could say he, he, he blitzed down the center with his marshal. That's all you really need to know. Uh, you could probably write down the colonels if you want to. But so then you could, the next time you play them, you would just, at the start of the game there during the setup phase, look at your scouting report and then make your, uh, make your setup effective for the last uh, setup that he had when he played you. Hopefully he wasn't scouting you because he, if he was scouting you, he might, you know, he might lotto blitz you on this side or on this side instead of the center. But if he didn't scout you or if he doesn't remember you or if he forgot to, you know, re record your game and, and, and uh, scout your setup, then you, you'll, have a, you'll have a good chance of uh, beating him. So use that to your advantage. It's perfectly legal to... Uh, to do scout. The only thing is you can't look at that information while you're playing the game. You have to look at it at the start of the game. And uh, I think that'll help you uh, move up the leaderboard uh, much more quickly if you, it'll, it'll keep you focused when you uh, scout your opponents and keep records. And uh, I think it'll help you uh, move up the leaderboards a lot faster. All right, I hope you learned something in this uh, game. Uh, this was a pretty easy game to win. I think my opponent, he, he basically was just scouting me during the game after he lost his marshal. So that was, you know, that was kind of tough for him. Uh, but, you know, the spy usually isn't there at the start of the game. But, you know, he gambled and he lost this time. All right, thanks for watching. We'll work on the next video. Bye for now.